In this video we will take a look at the default Brandwatch dashboard, as well as taking a brief look at the different ways in which you can customise your dashboards. This video is just an overview. If you would like more detail on specific functionality, please take a look at the other videos in this series which cover Brandwatch functionality in more detail, or refer to the user guide. Let's begin by opening a default dashboard. This is the dashboard created when you select the default template when creating a new dashboard. You'll notice that your new dashboard has been given the name Untitled Dashboard. You can rename your dashboard by clicking on the dashboard name. You can also rename the dashboard, among other things, by selecting the respective icon from the list next to the dashboard name. If you roll over these icons, you'll see the different options available. We'll look at all of these options in more detail in our dashboards video, so for now let's just take a look at the most important ones. The first icon that we see is the Save icon. Selecting this icon will allow you to save your dashboard in its current state. It will then appear in your list of dashboards in the Dashboards section of the sidebar. The Calendar icon allows you to control the date range for the dashboard. This can be a single day or a custom date range. There are also quick select options above the calendar for today, 7 days, 14 days, 1 month and 2 months. The checkbox Fixed Date Range is unchecked by default. By checking this box, the date range will remain fixed to your chosen dates. If, for example, you chose the 14 days preset and unchecked Fixed Date Range, the dashboard would always show the last 14 days relative to the current date. This is useful if you always want to look at recent data and means that you can avoid having to update the date range each time you access your dashboard. The funnel icon is where you'll find the dashboard filters. These filters are also available in individual components, but setting filters here will affect every component in the dashboard. We'll look at the available filters in a little more detail later in this video. Alternatively, check out the filters section of our user guide or our video on filters for more information on this feature. So, now that we're familiar with the dashboard control icons, we're ready to start using the dashboard to look at some data. For more information about any of these icons, please refer to the Dashboard Controls section of our user guide. Brandwatch dashboards can consist of any number of different tabs, each of which can house any number of different components. The default dashboard consists of seven different tabs, each of which houses components with a specific purpose. Look along the top of the dashboard and you'll see the default dashboard tab names Summary, Twitter, Top Sites, Authors, Topics, Charts and Mentions. We'll look at each of these briefly now. The Summary tab, which is the first tab that's shown when the dashboard is created, contains a single component, the Summary component. This component gives a basic overview of the data in your query. It shows the volume of mentions about your brand or topic, how many and what percentage of those are positive and negative, a page type breakdown and a list of sites where your brand is most discussed, as well as a chart showing mentions volume over the time period selected in the dashboard controls. To switch to a different tab, we just need to click on the tab name at the top of the dashboard. The Twitter tab contains multiple components which are set up to show you information exclusively about Twitter. The first component we see is the Twitter Insights component, which shows you, over a specified date range, what the top stories, top hashtags, most mentioned tweeters, and top emoticons are being mentioned on Twitter for your query. This component makes it much easier to understand the topics and trends within Twitter chat around your brand, as well as helping you identify advocates and influential tweeters. Underneath the Twitter Insights component, we then see a Mentions and Search component, which has been filtered by page type to show only mentions for your query which were generated on Twitter. We'll look at the Mentions and Search component a little bit later on in this video. The final component that we see on this tab is the Tweeters component. This is very similar to the Authors component, which we'll look at shortly, however this component is filtered to show just information from Twitter. It will display which tweeters have discussed you the most over your specified date range, along with various Twitter metrics about each author. It can then be reordered by any of these metrics so that you can easily identify which users you deem to be the most influential. On the Top Sites tab, we find four components. All of these components are Top Sites components, but they have different filters and views enabled to show slightly different information. 
The component at the top, for example, is a pie chart showing the distribution of mentions across the top sites. This can be changed, if required, by clicking on the View button at the top of the component. We can make it a sentiment pie chart, a bar chart, or a table like the other components on the tab. Most components give you the option to change the way the data is displayed, so try clicking here and experimenting with the different options as you are setting up your dashboards. The subsequent top sites components are displayed as tables, but differ from each other as they have different filters applied to show just news sites, blogs, and forums respectively. To check which filters are applied to a component, or to alter the filter settings, click the Filters button at the top of the component. This opens a panel on the right-hand side of the component that allows you to configure the data displayed by that component. Looking down to the Filters section, we can see that there is an active filter under Sentiment and Page Type by the green text that reads On. If we click on Sentiment and Page Type, we can then see the Page Type filter is set to show just news mentions. We go into more detail about the available filters in another video titled Filters. Feel free to have a look through and experiment with the filters yourself though. Moving on to the Authors tab, we see a similar layout to the Top Sites tab. This time though, we are looking at an Authors component in each case, which displays information about post authors rather than the sites themselves. The author names that BrownWatch can identify include Twitter handles, forum usernames, blog post authors and so on. We can't always tell you who wrote a piece of content, but where we can it will be recorded and can be viewed here. Similarly to the Top Sites tab, these components are of the same type but are set up with different views and filters to display different information. The Topics tab contains just one component by default, called the Topics component. This is a word cloud containing words and phrases that are frequently found within our query. For example, in our word cloud for ice cream, we see the names of various different flavours of ice cream because these are all words that are commonly found in relation to ice cream. On the Charts tab, we see three charts. As with other components, each of these charts has its own filters set, which can then be changed using the Filters panel if you wish. The view can also be changed, as we discussed before, in order to see the data displayed as a different type of chart. By default, the components are set to show bar charts. The first of these charts shows volume of mentions each day, divided by sentiment for the date range specified in the dashboard controls. This allows you to see how, or if, the sentiment is changing over time. Below this, another chart again shows volume each day, this time broken down by page type. The third chart shows the sentiment breakdown of mentions on each page type. This can be useful to determine where the most positive or negative conversation is taking place. For example, you might see that the conversation around your brand or product is positive on Twitter, but that a large percentage of forum conversation is negative. On all of these charts, you can click on the bars to see the applicable mentions for that day, sentiment or page type. On the Mentions tab, there is a single component called the Mentions and Search component. This allows you to look at the individual mentions that make up your query. You can see at the top how many mentions there are in the currently selected time period. If you scroll down, you can see that you can click through the mentions page by page or jump to a specific page using the various controls. The Mentions and Search component allows you to customise the columns that are displayed alongside each mention. Click on the Columns drop-down to see the available options. There are quite a few different columns available, but they are all organised into sections so that you can find them more easily. You can click on one of the main section checkboxes to select or clear everything within that section. When you've selected the columns that you want, just remember to click Apply to apply those changes. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of how to find your way around the BrandWatch default dashboard. You can experiment with adding new tabs and components to explore more options if you wish.